Hey guys, David here. Welcome to Digital Outlook, where you're going to find the best community in all of crypto. In today's video, we have got some amazing news with respect to Ripple turning the tables on the SEC. So guys, without further ado, why don't we get to it? So for those of us who have been watching this Ripple versus the SEC case over the last couple of years, we have just witnessed one delay after another that has just caused this case to drag on and on and on. Well, guys, it looks like those days are coming to a very, very quick end. And hey, I was here way back before the SEC dropped this lawsuit on Ripple in December of 2020. And I was accumulating way back there all the way through till now. And I suppose... In retrospect, we all owe the SEC some measure of thanks because as a result, we have been able to buy XRP at some amazingly discounted prices. Now, having said that, it is definitely looking like this thing's going to wind up very, very soon and those discounts, they're going to be no more. Now, one thing that we want to know as we're getting to the very end here is what are the critical dates that we need to be aware of with respect to this case that are coming up this month and into December. And there's some big ones out there. Well, in this article right here, Ripple versus SEC, lawyer explains why November 30th is a crucial date and why settlement is possible. So let's just page down here a little bit and read this. By November 30th, both Ripple and the SEC have to file their summary judgment briefs, which will remain under seal for the time being. On December 2nd, the two parties are going to meet jointly to discuss any redactions in those court filings. Now, a few days later, on December 5th, Ripple's and the SEC's briefs are going to be made public. This is going to be big. Finally, on December 22nd, the omnibus motions to seal all documents related to summary judgment motions will be filed. Now, there's, here's this guy. He's given his take on all of this kind of stuff. And just listen to what he comes up with here. According to a renowned Australian lawyer and crypto enthusiast, Bill Morgan, November 30th could be an important date that sets the course for the outcome of this entire lawsuit. According to Morgan, the documents that will be made public on December 5th could be one of the most revealing documents of the trial. Now, it says here, Ripple may be one of the most telling documents filed in the case to, to date and certainly one of the top few I've eagerly awaited for. That's what Bill Morgan is saying here. Now, Morgan believes, based on his experience as a mediator, that a settlement agreement between the SEC and Ripple is a real possibility and soon. He noted that a settlement agreement could be reached at any time and, get this guys, without the public's knowledge. Nobody outside the parties will know until the parties say it has settled. So look, guys, for all we know, a settlement could already have been made, but it has not been made public yet. Now, according to the attorney, Ripple's possession of him and speech provides it with strong leverage in order to keep these documents secret and prevent a broader impact on overall crypto market regulation. The SEC may even be forced to settle. Now, that is something that in this XRP community, we have been proposing for a long time. But the legal community is also getting on board saying, hey, there's lots of leverage in Ripple's hands with respect to a settlement because what's in those emails, the Bill Hinman emails, could really decimate the SEC. And more than likely, they're not wanting to get that out there before the public's eyes. So when this guy was asked if the SEC might eventually be forced to make Hinman documents public, this is what he says. He says, not necessarily. 
if keeping the him and documents confidential is a term of the settlement. That is why having them gives Ripple real leverage in settlement negotiations. So we don't know on what basis Ripple received them that does not allow them to be publicly revealed. Under the local rules under which I practice, this guy saying in Australia, there is an implied undertaking not to publicly reveal documents disclosed by another party until they're put into evidence. So guys, that means settlement. Because once we go to summary judgment or trial, then those him and emails, they become evidence. And under this kind of like common law system that we have, all of that would be available publicly. And most folks are saying, hey, look, the SEC is never going to want all of that information to be made public. And so, therefore, in Ripple's brief, all eyes would be on whether or not the fintech company cites him and documents as evidence. And I'm looking forward to seeing that. To the extent Ripple waves it, it could be a telltale sign of a settlement agreement. So let's say Ripple's brief comes out and there's absolutely zero mention of the him and emails. Now, all of us that have been following this saw just how much back and forth fighting was done over the him and emails. And what this guy's saying here is, if you don't see it in there, then more than likely there's been negotiated settlement going on behind the scenes. And that's why he says that is a telltale sign. And I would have to agree with him. Already in mid-September, XRP community lawyer John Deaton, Deaton had expressed a similar view. And according to him, the him and documents are of key importance to Ripple. So this is what Deaton had said, and most of us kind of know. Deaton said that if Judge Torres rules that the documents must be released, the SEC delay taxes could run out of time by the end of the year, forcing a settlement. Now, guys, we know that once this thing settles, you can take those discounted prices of, prices of XRP, and they're like gone. They're not going to be there. And also, once settlement happens, Brad Garlinghouse has made it absolutely clear that the moment this this thing settles, they're going to IPO. And did we not just see yesterday that Bank of America comes out and says, hey, once this thing is settled, we are going to be utilizing Ripple's on-demand liquidity for our cross-border payment rails. And we know this much. Hey, look, ODL for Ripple utilizes XRP as that bridge asset and Bank of America will be using XRP. And if one of the big banks starts doing this and they're able to reduce their free structure that massively, just watch and see if all the other banks don't just come in and follow suit. Now that is going to be quite amazing. But guys, take a look at how much Ripple has spent on this lawsuit. So Ripple has spent or will have spent over 100 million defending itself against the SEC in this lawsuit. And that's coming right from Brad Garlinghouse. Now, when you think about that, hey, says right here, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse says the cost of his firm's lawsuit with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission will be well above the nine-figure mark. Well, some information has been floating around that is truly quite amazing. Now, imagine this scenario. Here you have Ripple being sued by the SEC, costing them over $100 million in legal fees. Do you think that they're just going to sit back after they get some kind of settlement? Now, my guess is they're going to probably write it into the settlement, but other folks are speculating something completely different, and I want to show you this right here. So this is talking about, sorry, I'm going to go back up here. So this is talking about XRP being in the future. And this came out just today, November 23rd, 2022. And it might become the next Bitcoin by 2030, meaning it, it is now the top of the heat. It's the market driver. So listen to this. Based on the crypto market's recent shenanigans, Ripple is dominating the market. The XRP price has been on the rise recently, and much of that increase can be attributed to the investors' positive reaction to the speculation that Ripple might actually file a lawsuit against the SEC. Talk about turning the tables in this entire case. Can you imagine what it will be like if there's a settlement, XRP XRP gets designated as a non-security, Ripple has spent over a hundred million dollars fighting this case, and then they turn around and sue the SEC. Now, we have been watching some major lawsuits coming from the marketplace towards the SEC, and I just 
read an article where you saw a, a lawyer on behalf of Ethereum filing a lawsuit against the SEC so that Ethereum gets clarity as to whether or not it's a security. Guys, this would just be absolutely an amazing event if it takes place. Truly something phenomenal. We are witnessing some of the most volatile and crazy action in this case. And so nothing would really surprise me if it came out this way. So it's going to be something to watch. Now, listen, I've got a little clip here from Brad Garlinghouse and he's actually talking about Ripple's basic journey in the last few years and he's giving this speech it's only a literally less than a minute but he's giving this introductory speech at Ripple Swell that just happened this year in in London so why don't we watch that and we'll be right back I'm excited to share with all of you that Ripple has now processed nearly $30 billion worth of volume since launch and over 20 million transactions since we first launched RippleNet years ago. We're helping customers every step of the way to make sure their wallet has sufficient liquidity at all times for the smoothest possible experience. Over 10 years now, Ripple has been at the crux between enterprises and crypto native services, and we are doubling down on that. I hope it resonates with you in the same way it resonates with me. And this is Crypto Means Business. Guys, wasn't that just an amazing encouragement? I mean, you are watching just in the last number of years, billions of dollars of revenue generated, millions of transaction, offices being opened all over the globe. And I really liked what he had to say at the end there when he said crypto means business. He doesn't just mean getting down to business. He's talking about business opportunities, innovation, strategic partnerships, joint ventures. I mean, you can literally see how this is going to take off like wildfire when this whole new digital economy opens up and the opportunity is like an undiscovered country. Truly is going to be absolutely phenomenal. It is something that I am so glad that we have been able to become aware of this space and have been involved in this space at such an early, early time. It is really going to be mesmerizing because when we see absolute institutional adoption and global recognition for this space, which is exactly where we're going, Anyone that is watching what's happening around the world with central bank digital currencies, the transfer of information, the treaties even between countries with respect to information, and the transfer of value, you know right off we are moving into a digital world and it is going to be revolutionary. And the opportunities, I don't even think we can fully grasp the level of opportunities that are going to be available in this new space. So before you go, guys, there's a couple of things that I'd like to keep on your radar. And one of them is we opened up and launched this Discord for the channel on Saturday when we were celebrating reaching that 10,000 sub goal. And this has been a great space and folks are coming in, they're signing up and you can come in here. I'm going to be showing up in there so we'll be able to talk and have live discourse about any kind of subjects, crypto related and questions you might have. So it's a great, great resource. Now, next to that, guys, we've also got something else going on, and that is that also on Saturday, I had uh, mentioned that, look, a lot of folks have come on and said, hey, I'm wanting some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Do you provide that? And for a while there, I was saying, hey, I, you know, I'm not really doing that just yet, and on and on and on, and I was trying to structure it where it would be a benefit to everybody. So I went out and decided that, hey, as we cross that 10,000 sub threshold from now until the end of December, I opened it up to 25 folks only. And I know it's not going to be for everybody, but for those that really are going to get the most out of it, for $250, I'm going to give you a one-on-one -on -one hour with me. Now, it does not matter where you are in the world. So if you're in Australia, you're in Great Britain, you're over there in Germany or wherever you are in the world, 
You tell me what time works best for you and we will meet at that time. And you can ask whatever you want. You can throw me your portfolio if you want me to go over that with you or whatever it is. And for that one hour, we will work together to help develop, whether it's an exit strategy, whatever you're looking for, we can do that during that time. And I hope that will be an added plus to those in the community that would want to take advantage of it. So that's out there. Now, listen, I have already got over over 10 folks already booked in. So look, we're, we don't have very many spots left and it's a maximum of 25. So if you want to do that, just sign up right there at coaching at the digital outlook.com. Throw out your interest. I'll write you back and we'll get it all worked out. Now, guys, as you know, I'm not a financial advisor and this isn't financial advice, but if you found value in it, if you'd hit that like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And look, don't forget to hit that notification bell down there so that you don't miss out on any of these videos that we're uploading. And if you're one of the thousands of people who are watching these videos, but you haven't yet subscribed, would you do the channel a favor and join this community? We would really love to have you on board. So, in the meantime, and in between time, stay safe, be blessed, and I'll catch you in the next one.